Hey guys, I wanted to come on today and I want to show you what it takes to make a puzzle. Okay, so these are all puzzle pieces. I just completed this puzzle inside Cricut Design Space and I'm going to be uploading the tutorial to show you just how to do it. So these are all puzzle pieces from the puzzle that I just made in Cricut Design Space. Okay. So I'm going to be showing you what you will need to make a puzzle. So first off, you can use chipboard. This is chipboard. You can buy this in the craft supply stores. I'm gonna hold up one sheet of it so you can see the thickness of it, okay? This is chipboard, okay? You can also use craft board. Your craft board is normally hanging in the craft, uh, in the Cricut section. It's normally hanging up, okay? On the front of it, it's gonna say craft board. Make sure you guys can see that. It's gonna say craft board with the K, okay? And it has multiple colors in there, okay? So you have kind of like your tan color, black, and then it comes with like kind of a gray color. And I normally use the tan color for my puzzles. Um, and then you're also going to need, now if you're using craft board or chipboard, it will work with your fine point blade. If you decide to do this project with the cereal box container, then you're going to need the knife blade. Your cereal box container is not going to cut with your fine point blade. And if it does cut, by the time it's done, you're not even going to recognize that it was an image to be a puzzle, okay? So chipboard or craft board, not chip wood. No wood in this project, guys, okay? And then you're going to need either sticker paper or printable vinyl. Either one of those will work, but you need a printable material that has a sticky backing to it, okay? So I use this Astro Designs. I either got this at Walmart or, or Michaels, I don't remember, or Michaels or Hobby Lobby, I don't know. But sticker paper, you can also order sticker paper or your craft board or chipboard off of Amazon as well. Um, but the way I did my project, I'm showing you what you can use and that this only requires the fine point blade. You also want to make sure that your mat is very sticky for this project because when you use craft board or chipboard as your setting in Cricut Design Space, it's going to do several cuts. So you want your image to still be recognizable after all those cuts are done. So you want to make sure that you are using um, the appropriate backing and the appropriate tool for that backing for your um, in Cricut Design Space. All right. Um, other than that, you'll need an image um, that you're going to be working with. Now, I highly recommend that you use an image that's a complete image that doesn't have any cuts inside of the image. OK, um, because if you do, then Cricut is going to attempt to cut out those things in addition to your puzzle pieces. So if there's eyes that are supposed to be cut out or facial features or anything like that in your image, it's going to cut that out and it's going to take away from your image being a complete puzzle. OK, so I'm going to show you here today the image that I'm going to be using. So you want to have something, an image more in a rectangle, rectangle or square shape. Um, would be better for you. Um, and then the puzzle template that I'm using, if you would like um, me to send you this puzzle template, then you can email me at kendors48 at gmail.com and I'll email you my puzzle template to work with. Not my puzzle template, but it was a free one um, that I got offline. Um, but other than that, those are the only tools that you're going to need. And of course, like I said, your mat needs to be sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. So if you have the purple mat and it's really sticky, then use your purple mat. If not, um, make sure you tape it down really, really good, you know, because if it shifts, you can forget it. OK, you don't want it to shift in the process. So I want to come on and tell you what supplies you're going to need and show you how to do your own puzzle in Cricut Design Space. I used craft board for this project and sticker paper and I use my green mat and my fine point blade, and then my image. That's it, all right? So you wanna see how to do it? All right, let me show you. All right, guys, so here is the, um, you can see on my screen here, 
I have the image and I have the puzzle template. So the first thing you want to do is locate the image that you want to work with. I highly, re highly recommend that you use, use an image that is just a full um, a square or rectangle shape um, instead of an image that is like an SVG that has other additional cuts in it. Because what's going to happen is it's going to attempt to cut out your puzzle pieces and it's going to attempt to cut out the cuts from your image. So please, please, please do not choose an SVG file here. You want to use an image that's a full square, rectangle, how, however you want to call it, okay? All right, so I have my image here and I'm not going to show you how to upload an image. Hopefully you already know how to upload an image into Cricut Design Space. Um, but once you upload the image to Cricut Design Space, you want to make sure that you change that image sizing. So I'm just going to move this in like that. All you're going to do is go to your menu and you're going to click on this lock proportions one time. And that's going to unlock. There we go. Unlock it. You're going to change the width to 6.467 and tab. And you want the height to be 9.211 and tab. Okay. You're going to change the X position to zero and the Y position to zero. And then you want to make sure that your puzzle template actually has the same thing. So I'm going to re-upload this puzzle template because I want to show you how to use it. So I'm going to upload, view all, and then I'm going to locate my puzzle template, which is here. And then I'm going to click on insert images in the right corner. When that template comes in, number one, it's going to be larger than we need it. And number two, it's going to have a black layer. We do not need that black layer. So you're going to go over to the right side of your screen, locate the black layer and click on the eye one time. And then it's going to reveal your puzzle template. The next thing you're going to do is you are going to you are going to, um, I don't know why that popped up, like, okay. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your puzzle template is the same size as your image. So select your template, click on the lock proportions one time, and change the height to 6.467 and the height to 9.211, okay. And then go ahead and put it in the zero, zero for your X and your Y. Now, what you're going to do now is make sure you have the puzzle template and the image selected together. And you're going to go to align and click on center. And that's going to ensure that everything is lined up nice and pretty. Okay. After you do that, you're going to highlight everything. Go over to the top right and click on make it. Okay. And so what you're going to see, oh, I'm sorry. One step I forgot. Um, glad I caught myself there. So once you group, not group everything together, but once you've selected both the image and the puzzle template, you want to come down to the bottom right side of your screen and click on attach. Okay. Click on attach. And that's going to bring the two together because you don't want this to be a separate, um, two separate cuts. You want it to be one clean cut. Okay. So you have to attach. And then you're going to click on make it. And I knew right off the bat when I came here and I saw a print and cut for my image and then a print, um, a cut for my template, you do not want that. You only need one thing showing right here which is everything together. So what's going to happen at this point is Cricut is going to print out your image. After it prints out your image, then you're going to put that image on top of your craft board or your chipboard, and then you're going to place it into your cutting machine, and then Cricut is going to cut out the puzzle pieces, and it's going to cut around this part here for you so that you don't have to do any cutting yourself, okay? So it's only one cut. That's why you do not want to be working with an SVG file at this point, because if you're working with an SVG file, 
whatever cuts are in that SVG file are also going to cut on your puzzle template in addition to your template. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so at this point, I'm ready to click on continue in the bottom right corner. And Cricut is gonna recognize what cutting machine I'm using. It has done so, and I'm gonna click send to printer. And when you get to this part, guys, what you should see is nothing but the image. You should not see any puzzle pieces in the image at this point, okay? And that's because the only thing that should be printing out right now is just your image. It should not be printing out your puzzle template, okay? So at this point, we are going to make sure we're using the right printer. And we're going to remove the bleed. And at this point, we're ready to click on print. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click over so you can see me from this point. So give me one second here. All right guys, so I'm gonna be using the Astro. <laughs> might help if I turn it in the right direction. I'm gonna be using the Astro Design sticker paper because I don't have any printable vinyl. So I'm gonna be using this. And at this point of the project, what you're gonna do is you're going to place this into your um, printer and you're gonna place it with the sticky or what would be the side that you're gonna peel. You're gonna place that up so that when it goes in and it prints on the other side, you'll have the Peel the side that you peel that you can peel off and then stick to your chipboard or your craft board or cereal box, whatever you're going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and load my printer here and get it ready. So, again, make sure I got it on the right side. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to go ahead and click on print so that it prints out my image. And I've already showed you that you're going to remove the bleed and make sure you select the correct printer because I have two printers. And so this is going to just print out the image and it's going to put the black line around it so that Cricut Design Space knows that this is a cut and print project. All right, so this is the image here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove the backing from here. And I'm then going to place it onto the chipboard, I mean the craft board, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, before you place this into your cutting machine, guys, you're gonna go ahead and remove the backing. You gotta see where the cuts are again. I don't have my glasses on this morning. Y'all know I'm blind. So I'm just peeling the um, backing off so that I can stick this onto my craft board. Okay, so this is trash. And then I'm going to take the image and now try to turn this around without turn the mic off. All right, so now I'm going to be taking my image and I'm going to place my image on top of my craft board in that very top left position like you would normally do your cricket. And you want to make sure that there are no bubbles, guys. You don't want any bubbles. So I'm going to go in and mash this down or use my varnish tool so that I can make sure that there's no air pockets. Okay, so 
that's what I'm going to be doing here. It's just making sure that this image is laying flat on the craft board. We do not want any air pockets. And we want to make sure it's good and stuck to your craft board. And hopefully it doesn't sound super noisy to you guys. All right, now you want to make sure that this is stuck really, really good to your craft board, chipboard, cereal box, whatever you're using. Because when you get ready to cut this, have Cricut to cut it for you, it's going to take several passes. What that means is it's going to cut three times, okay, because I'm going to be choosing craft board. And so in order for it to cut out right, I'm going to have to choose craft board. Now, I would not recommend you use card stock, guys, because card stock is even thinner than your craft board, okay? So, you know, if you just want to create a puzzle just to see the process, you can use the, the card stock, but card stock is not what you want to use for this project, okay? You want to use craft board, chipboard, or cereal box. Do not run out and buy any craft... Um, any chip wood, guys, chip wood takes hours to cut. <laughs> and by the time it finishes, it's not going to look anything like your puzzle. So don't go out, guys, trying to invest in any chip, board, any, any chip wood, okay? All right. So as I'm talking to you, I'm just steady, making sure that my image is laying flat. You don't want, again, I can't stress enough, no air pockets, okay? So notice there's no puzzle cuts showing on here and that's the way you want it you do not want any puzzle cuts to be if you if you see your your puzzle at this point it's no good okay the puzzle template is seamless okay all right so i'm gonna give it one more good swipe here All right, so what's going to happen is Cricut Design Space is now, it's going to look for the black line because you know it does that with the print. And it's going to actually cut our puzzle out for us in the, in the rectangle or square shape. And it's also going to cut out our puzzle pieces. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and line this up now on my mat. I would normally use my purple mat because it's for strong grip. But my purple mat, it's not sticky right now. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape on here and on this green mat, you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna do even better. new green long mat here. Because I want to make sure that you guys get the complete project down. I've had a lot of people that want to make the puzzle and for some reasons they're having issues. So I want to make sure I get everything nice and good for you. Now that you can see me. All right, so now I'm going to take my image along with my mat and my craft board and I'm going to line it up just like that. You want to make sure your mat is sticky. If your mat is not sticky, guys, this is going to give you problems because it's going to do several cuts. So you don't need your craft board or your chipboard moving around because if it's moving around then your puzzle pieces are not going to be cut properly okay so I'm just making sure that it's laying nice and flat on my mat again if you have your purple mat which is for strong grip then use your purple mat you just want to make sure whatever mat you're using it's really sticky 
at this point, I'm ready to change my settings in Cricut Design Space. So I am going to be using um, Craft Board. And so there's an option in Cricut Design Space for Craft Board, okay? So I'm gonna choose Craft Board and I'm going to go with more pressure here. All right. And so what it's going to tell you in clamp A, there should be nothing. But in clamp B, you want to make sure you have your fine point blade because craft board, it takes the craft, it takes the fine point blade. Serial board takes a knife blade and chip board also takes the fine point. So just going to put that out there. And again, I'm just going to press this down and I'm getting ready to put this now into my cutting machine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this cut. All right, so now it's inserted into my cutting machine. You guys can see here. So what it's doing is it's looking to see where the cuts are. So it's getting ready to start cutting. And you can see that it's cutting all inside, okay? Not just normally where we just cut around, it's cutting inside. So it's cutting out our puzzle pieces now. And all I'm doing is just pressing to make sure it's as sticky as possible. Now, just so that you know, your craft board is going to do three passes. I won't look cockeyed, like I'm looking cockeyed at you guys. Your craft board is going to do three passes. It's going to cut this three times, okay, on craft board. Because it wants to ensure that it gets through the thickness of the craft board. So it's not just going to cut one time. All the cutting that is done so far, I'm only at 10%, okay? So I would normally stop the video and come back, but I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to bear it out. So you guys, I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking during this point, <laughs> but um, I guess I could, I guess I could talk. Um, I'm going to point out the differences here. So I'm using Astro Designs for my sticker paper. This is for my image. This is what I printed my image out on. And I'm also using I'm also using this packet that I bought from, I think I got it from either Michaels or Hobby Lobby. But you can get this in the Cricut section. And it's called Craft Board Sampler. It comes in um, kind of like a, a gray a kind of a uh, cardboard color, kind of brownish tan, and then black, okay? So all three colors came in here. And I'm just gonna show you, this is chip board, not chip wood. This is chip board. And you can see the thickness of the chip board there. This is not card stock. I do not recommend using card stock with this project, okay? But this is chip board, so you can use chip board, or you can use craft board, okay? The chip board is thicker than the craft board is, but either one will work and both will work with your fine point blade, okay? 
just making sure everything is still good here. You can also use printable vinyl, guys. For this project, you can use printable vinyl. It doesn't have to be sticker paper. Um, either one of those will work, printable vinyl or sticker paper. Um, and like I said, the craft board and the chipboard will allow you to use your fine point blade. It's going to do several passes. As long as this has been cutting, it's only at 27% because it's going to cut more than one time, okay? So if you're choosing a setting that's only going to do one cut and you're using craft board or chipboard, it's not going to cut through it, okay? If you're using cereal boxes, okay, if you're using the carton from a cereal box, you will need the knife blade, okay? The fine point is not going to cut that. All right, so we're at 31% here. Um, done. I cannot stress enough, guys, to um, make sure that you have the proper tools. Do not use cardstock. I'm going to show you why. This is cardstock. And you can see the cardstock here. Even though it's a 12 by 12 and it feels like, you know, you may look at it and think, oh, that's thick enough. It's too flimsy. It's too flimsy to do your puzzle. And I hope you guys can hear me okay. It's too flimsy for your puzzle. Let me make sure I got my volume up here. Give me one second. There we go. So cardstock, no. Chipboard, craft board, cereal box container. Okay, those are the three choices. And again, for the first two, I can't stress enough. Fine point blade, cereal box, knife blade. So we're at 42%. So you can see, this is why I said, um, choose, if you choose craft board, it's going to do three passes. Three passes means three cuts. It's not going to cut one time and spit it out. It's cutting three times to make sure that it gets through that craft board, okay? Another thing, do not go out and buy any chip wood. <laughs> I watched Jennifer Maker. Um, the first time before I decided to do a puzzle, I watched her and uh, she showed the difference between all the different uh, backings that you can use for the puzzle and that craft, that, that chipboard, I mean the chip wood took hours, okay, and you couldn't even recognize a puzzle. I don't even think she let it finish because it took just that long. All right, so we're almost... Halfway there, <laughs> we're at 50%. All right, so um, one of the things I want to tell you guys is that um, don't mess with the process. Once you start this to cutting, just let it do its thing, okay? As long as you have, as long as you have a sticky mat, um, and as long as you have chipboard, craft board, or um, chipboard, craft board, or a cereal box, and the right blade for whichever one backing you're using, and you follow the steps that I've shown you here, then your image is going to be perfectly cut out for this project. Don't mess with it. Because the craft board, you can see it's still going. It's going to do its thing. It's going to cut out three times. Okay, so we're at 51% and now it's going to go back in and do the last cut. And you just let it do its thing. I can't stress that enough. I know this video is going to be longer than I normally like my videos to be, but I want to make sure that you get the complete process for how to do this puzzle because I've had a lot of questions. And sometimes, guys, and I'm not saying this because you don't have a right to your opinion because you do. If you choose to do the thumbs down on a video 
that doesn't help the creator unless you give them some feedback, okay? So um, if you feel like a tutorial didn't help you, leave a comment, you know, message the, the creator so that they'll know what they did so they can improve because anybody will tell you, if you say something about my tutorials, only thing I'm going to do is try to get better or redo the video so that everyone can understand. I've been in learning and development. I said last time over 25 years. Um, it's actually 30. <laughs> to tell you how old I am. Um, but I've been in learning and development for over 30 years. And I know that there are different people learn differently, different learning styles. So everyone doesn't learn at the same pace um, and by the same training method. OK, so I try to cover all different methods to reach out to everyone so that everyone can we can ensure that you learn. All right, guys, we're at 59 percent. We're almost there. <laughs> the process is lengthy, but it's worth it, especially if you're creating a puzzle, you know, for someone, you know, people love personalized projects or items or gifts. They love personalized stuff. They love stuff that they can't, somebody else can't just walk in Walmart or Target or wherever, you know, Macy's or whatever. You, does anybody remember Riches? We used to have a Riches and a Macy's. <laughs> or did Riches become just Macy's? I don't know. But we used to have a Riches when I lived in Atlanta. And um, that used to always be the question, are you going to Macy's or are you going to Riches? But wherever, people people love personalized gifts. So if you can make something for someone that they can't go into, you know, a store and just pick up and buy like the next person, they absolutely love it. So these puzzles, it's Christmas time. Can you imagine all you need? And like you can see the craft board, you buy it in a packet. The chipboard comes in a packet as well. It's not just a single sheet. They both come in packages. Look over, like I said, in the um, Cricut area and you'll find them. And you can or also order off of Amazon. Um, normally, I would do this project with printable vinyl, um, but you can use printable vinyl, sticker paper. Either one will work as long as it has an adhesive backing to it. Oh, God, it's so pretty, guys. I wish I had the printable vinyl because to me, it just looks prettier on the printable vinyl. We're at 72% here. And it looks amazing. <clears throat> All right, so it's getting ready to finish up here. Um, I have the long mat because my shorter mats are not as sticky and I need to clean them. But at work, I'm at the year end, so I'm trying to get a bunch of courses done in a short amount of time. So... I don't have a lot of time to do my craft stuff like I would like to. But after December 23rd, it's on and popping until the new year. <laughs> All right. I'm just holding my mat because I'm using the 12 by 24. So it keeps hitting up against my chair. One day, very soon, I'm going to have a real craft room. All right. We're at 79%. But yeah. Thank you. I don't remember the person's name, but thank you to the person who asked me to um, tell them how to print this project because, like I said, initially, I didn't have the ability to um, show myself and show the screen at the same time, and now I do. And so I decided to redo the puzzle. So that's, that's, where, that's how you give feedback, guys. If they just do a thumbs down, I mean, that does nothing for me to help me to be able to help you okay so think about that when you do thumbs down it's okay if you didn't like it and if you didn't learn anything um or if the video just sucked but tell the creator what they did so they can get better that's how i feel you know i'm not gonna put a thumbs down on a person um just to be nasty you know i would say something to the creator to say you know maybe next time could you show us xyz like this person did and looks what look what's happening i'm creating an entirely new video tutorial on the puzzle to help because that's what I'm here for to help I don't do these because I just want people to be able to see me look at a mess early in the morning <laughs> all right we are at 90 percent guys we're almost there we're homebound now 
I'm getting excited because I can't wait to show you that this process works. You just have to let it go. As long as you do everything that I've told you in that order, you'll be good. We're at 92% and my puzzle, my image still looks like the image and I have puzzle pieces. And we are at 93%, we're almost there. All right, she's gonna be finishing up. But yeah, it's Christmas time, guys. Can you imagine creating some personalized puzzles for Christmas to send out as gifts? It's COVID-19, you know, people are losing jobs. We don't have a lot of money right now. Some people will not be able to go out and buy Christmas toys and stuff like that for their kids. You know, but if you have these tools at home, you already have tools and stuff that you can create so much personalized stuff that, you know, the kids will have something rather than nothing, you know? And it's personalized from mama. <laughs> All right, we're at 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and release. And I'm gonna show you the finished project. So you see my image is all, it still looks like the image is not all cut up to where you can't, you know, tell what the image was. And so at this point, you're just gonna remove it from your mat. So you see how it has the shape of the rectangle there. And I always say this because I always think, oh, I can use that little bit of chipboard or crowd board for something else. So at this point, guys, I am going to start removing the puzzle pieces. See? From the mat because it's all cut up now. This is This is how you do it, guys. It's very, very easy and notice my image is not chipped up or cut up and all my pieces cut out perfectly so to help me with the process i'm going to use my spatula because i'm not going to sit and just pull off each piece i'm just trying to show you as much as i can and i'm just going to use my spatula to help me get the puzzle pieces off here And you see how everything cut with no problem? There's no bits and pieces. There's nothing sticking up. That's why I said I stress, highly, highly stress to you to make sure that you um, ensure that that sticker paper is laying flat on your craft board or chipboard before you cut it. So don't want anyone to not be able to learn how to do these puzzles because it works just like I said, it does. But I just could not at that time show you everything. So my pieces are trying to stick to my mat here. Then I'm gonna show you oh, everything once I get done here. I'm trying to keep my hair from getting on this mat. Y'all know when hair get on the mat, Lord Jesus. <laughs> it's like I'm in the kitchen cooking. Give me the spatula. All right. And you don't want to, you want to try to keep it as straight as possible so you don't curve your puzzle pieces. And just like that, guys, you see, puzzle piece. All right, I'm going to hang this mat up. Give me one second. I have to put it back up on the wall because I don't want it to lose its stickiness. All right, so now I have my complete puzzle. 
And there it is. All my puzzle pieces to be able to put together. Okay. Do not use cardstock for this project. Craft board, chipboard, cereal box container. Craft board, chipboard, fine point, cereal box, knife blade. Okay. Either printable vinyl or sticker paper. Either one of those will work um, for this project. And the craft board and the chipboard is going to cut three times. You don't have to keep putting it back in and having it to cut again. It's automatically set. And if it's not set, then just check your, your settings in Cricut Design Space um, for that material. But that's it, guys. That's how you do the puzzle. And I wanted to be able to show you the complete process because um, I've had a lot of questions about the puzzle. And I was wondering why the puzzle wasn't getting as many reviews. Um, and that could be why, because people were having problems. And because you don't tell me, I don't know. You just do a thumbs down. So that doesn't help me. I don't know. What do I need to change? So now you have the visual. So for the young lady um, that reached out to me, and inquired. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do a shout out here. Give me one second. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right. I am going to say thank you. A big thank you. One second here. to Cynthia Gomez, um, left a comment and said, can you show how to upload the puzzle image? Every time I try to do it, it does not cut correctly. And she actually left me this 11 hours ago, that message, 11 hours ago. Now she could have did a thumbs down and kept it moving, um, but then she'd have to go out and try to find somebody else to show her and try to understand how they teach you how to do it. And she still could have ran into problems. So. Here I am, guys, and this is what I do. I'm not charging you any anything for this because I feel like me bless God blesses me so that I can bless you, and that's why I'm here. Okay, so there we have it, guys. We have a complete puzzle, Cynthia. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns after you see this video tutorial, and thank you for letting me know how I can make it better. All right. So if you guys are currently in my Facebook group, Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters, thank you guys so much for being in my group. And if you would like to become a member of my group, we're small but mighty, um, then please send me a Facebook request to my Facebook group, not my Facebook page, but it's called Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get you in the group. Um, if you're currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're seeing my tutorial for the first time and you like what you've seen here today, then please like, share, and subscribe. Definitely share, guys. Tell others that I'm here um, because I'm, I'm underrated. <laughs> I'm underrated, guys, but highly appreciate it from those that do follow me. Highly appreciate it. And I thank I thank everyone for that. All right. So my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have a great day. Oh, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you'll be made aware anytime I upload tutorials to YouTube. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.